guys, uh, welcome back to Electrica, and I'm glad that uh, you're watching. Uh, okay, now, uh, probably you've heard uh, about high and low in float switches, okay? And uh, today I just want to show you how you can use two float switches uh, in controlling your pump. And uh, doing this, we achieve... Uh, we try to prevent our pump from sucking air because the pump tended to suck air in most cases okay especially if you have two tanks one uh, is overhead and there is one on the ground so you have one tank on the ground that uh, you know feeds the tank overhead and then the overhead tank is what you know supplies water inside your installation by gravity okay so you have one pump and you have two float switch now one float switch is gonna be in your higher tank and then you you will have one float switch in the lower tank now the float switch in the lower tank as i said it will help you to, pro to prevent your pump from sucking air uh, without it uh, uh, the pump will pump all the water uh, into the tank in the overhead uh, and it will never stop until that tank is full okay but if you have this, uh, should it happen that the, the pump is trying to, you know, to pump all the water from the tank, then that pump will be switched off. So you're going to set a, a, a threshold, a certain threshold on the lower tank such that every time that tank re reaches that threshold uh, level you set, the tank will, the, the pump will be switched off by this. Okay. So as long as the lower tank has water, uh, this foot switch will always be in the on position, okay? And it's only this one that will always play off and on depending on the higher tank, uh, its demand, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, wire it. So now, uh, of course, you're going to need a contactor, one contactor like this one, uh, of course, even if you don't have a zero, zero and when you're using this you can decide if you need it with a push button or you need it with a float switch only so we're just using a float switch only depend it let's say it's what you want okay and uh i'm gonna show you one thing when, the, when with this multimeter now this float switch has got two wires uh three wires in here okay one wire being common and then uh, these two wires serves, uh, in, uh, serves in two different positions. Now this first switch can uh, has two positions in its operation. This first switch can be in this position on, or at the same time it can be, can be in this position off. Also it can be in this position on, at the same time it can be in this position off. Okay, so that's what we're going to use it. Now, when we are connecting it, they are just going to be opposing each other. Okay, now our, for our circuit to close, uh, we'll need this float switch to be in this position. So the other one will be like this. Okay, so here our circuit will be closed completely. So this float switch will be like this and it will be closed in a higher tank. And this port, and this one will be like this, closed in the lower tank. Okay, we need it like this because the moment the water in the lower tank goes down at a certain threshold, then it will go like this, and it will switch off our circuit to prevent the tank from sucking air. And this one, it will be like this in open position, such that the the pump can fill the tank. But the moment the tanker is full, it will go back like this and it will switch off the pump. So there will be no more waters that get into the tank. Okay? Alright. Now, to know in which position, you have, of course, to hold your your, your float switch and use a meter in case you, you don't know. So you have to put your meter in, in continuity. Okay? Now, you're going to put one lead on the, on the common. Okay? And you're going to lift the foot switch like this and then you're gonna try so you see the blue meaning that this pos this first switch will be closed in this position if you use common and blue and it will be open in this position if you use common and brown 
Okay? So it's just the same thing with this one. Now, so connecting it, what we are going to do, we are going to eliminate one wire in each. So we're just going to use just going to use this step. Now we are just going to eliminate glue here. Okay. And we are just going to eliminate brown here. Okay. So you see. The other side we are using common brown and this side we are using common blue. Okay. Now we are just going to use this to help us to connect these wires together. Okay. Now, of course, what you have to know is that these fold switch they, they, they will work in a series. Okay. We're just going to put them in a series. So we have got a wire here that we are going to use as our to supply us with power okay so the one thing we are going to do is we are just going to you get this common and one wire the other side then you have to connect them together like this and then we're just going to use this connector for protection okay and uh, we'll just put it here. This connector. So I just want you to get the concept of how all this works. Now, we are remaining with these. We've already connected here. So we need to get our live this side and then we'll feed it here. So this supply cable of ours, we're just going to use the live and we connect it here. Okay. And then we also use this connector to help us hold it. Okay. So we are remaining with these two wires, so that means that this will now be the the live or the supply of our contactor L1 or contactor A1. Okay, so we have to supply our contactor here. And then this is of course our neutral. So don't worry, this is the neutral, it's, the, uh, it's just because it's brown. Now here, okay. So essentially, you've seen that uh, our current through here, uh, we get it from here. Then it will come through this float switch, come back here, go through this float switch, and then it energizes this. Okay. So now we're just going to power it up, and then we see what happens. Okay, now um, let me hold these two fold switch right now, and uh, this one here in my left hand it's now our lower fold switch in the lower tank, and then this one in my right hand is our higher fold switch, so it's high. And as I'm holding it like this, you see our contactor it's in half position, so that means that this is in half off position. So I'm just going to flip it, and then we see. So you see, now here, it means that our pump will be in the running position. So as long as there is water in the lower tank, this fold switch in my left hand, it always remain closed. Okay. And then the one in the, in the right position, it remain like this if the pump or if there is still gap in that tank and it always go off. If the tank is full, okay. Now, let me assume that your ta uh, your pump is running here, exactly like this, and then eventually maybe your lower tank is not being filled, so the water has reached that, that threshold that you set, and now this first switch will go like this, and then you see. So, the over the tank or the higher tank, 
is in on position but because the water levels in the lower tank they have gone totally down so the pump has been switched off and that has saved you from your pump sucking air and this can really be a very big problem if you have a very bigger tank i mean a very bigger pump okay so uh, ho hopefully you've been seeing this and you're wondering what it is so this is a counterweight when this thing gets into water remember it is light okay it's less dense uh, so you have to add this counterweight such that this will force it to be like go into water but of course it can't because it is less so it will help it to flip it such that it can go in off position okay all right so uh, that has been it so hopefully uh, this has helped you in one way or the other so thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to press that subscribe button and the, the bell notification such that YouTube can notify you every time we upload a new video okay yeah and don't forget to give me a thumbs up all right I'll see you in the next one